So I've gone on a limb and say that writing down your vision or coming to know what your vision in life is, it is a simple thing. It is something you can do in one sitting. And I've been going on a tangent trying to tell you how exactly that is going to be done. And probably in the episode today, I want to close that because it's a straightforward thing. Remember in the previous episode, in the previous series, we were discussing what you do after you have garnered the vision, after you've clarified what that vision is. And so today, I want just to focus on how do you know what the vision is in the first place? How do you clarify that vision? And we started that process yesterday in the episode. And today we come to a close of the same by giving you one more nugget. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So what I said is that there are very many people who do not know the vision of their lives because they have not decided to know. They normally tell you this. They normally say that if a man comes and puts a gun on your head, the things that go around your mind at that moment in time, there are so much. I mean, so much can be done at gunpoint. The same thing happens when you're constricted and you're walking on the edge. You are more alive when you're walking on the edge than when you're walking on a flat surface. What I'm saying is that people have not drawn a line in the sand and decided that I am going to document my vision. Your vision doesn't come from somewhere outside of yourself. It doesn't come from your teacher in high school your mother, your father, your pastor, your prophet, especially those, it comes from you. You come with it. Actually, you come loaded with it. And it's manifested in very many things that coalesce into your passion. What you're passionate about speaks of the semblance of your vision. The problem with our society is that we have learned a lot to not dwell on our passions. This is the third or fourth time I'm quoting this. I, I, I saw a friend writing on Facebook the other day saying, when are we going to stop pursuing our passions so that we can start looking for those gigs and those things that pay real money? The society has been created in such a way that people are moving away. People at the earliest age possible, they dump and dampen what they are passionate about and they do what is pragmatic, what brings food on the table, what pays the bills. And at the end of the day, that doesn't give you vision enough. But even if you did that, let me just say that, let me just go on that route. Even if you did that, still, coming up with a vision is a matter of decision. It's a matter of sitting down and saying, I am writing my vision today. You will get it. It is inside of you. It's coalesced into things that matter to you. So ask yourself, what matters to me? What is it that matters to me? And remember, let me just do a recap what we talked about yesterday. That the vision has to be something that is benefiting somebody else. So if you find that you're writing a vision which is about you and your wife and your kids alone, that is not necessarily a vision. Of course it it's a semblance of a vision, yeah. It's better than nothing. But a real vision normally benefits other people. It's something that you would do 
let's say if there is basically no opposition to what you're doing it's a problem that you're solving for the world or for whatever it is that you're passionate about that you're connected to it's connected to your passion it actually is connected to your values the things that you value the most in life the beginning point uh, w can clement so and say the beginning point of success is a definiteness of purpose that is it what you're passionate about forms what your values are and forms what your vision in life is going to be and you don't need a week to know what you're passionate about you don't need 3 days to know what your values to you don't need uh, a lot of time to know these things that you really desire from the deepest recesses of your spirit so what i'm asking you to do is simply this make a decision go out in a secluded place some alone place put some quiet music and so on and do some kind of meditation and have a paper and a pen remember the vision has to be written down have a paper and a pen and try to figure out what problems you are passionate about solving and then create a vision out of it if it is something that you know there was no opposition to you doing it what would it be if money is not the problem what would that thing be and then write your vision in a simple way i think this guy called uh, Simon Sinek has come up with a very simple way of writing the vision just writing it into in two two parts you start with the word to which is t o to dash that is what are you going to do and then so that dash why is that important to you that's it that's it that's it you can feel those two blanks i mean how many blanks have you filled in your entire life you feel very many blanks in your entire life and you can feel those two blanks to so that to speak a word in season to those who are weary so that multitudes of those who are feeling left out of life can discover their reason for being and that they can fulfill their purpose and deploy it that's just something that i've come up with right now and it's written down and now your life revolves around that particular thing that is how you come up with a vision there is basically no big time brain surgery shortcut to it it's not that complicated it is that simple the thing that you need to work on is your confidence because you're thinking that it has to be something grand and the english has to be good and so on and so forth no it's not about the english It's not about the English it's about the functionality of the vision it's not about the grammar and the spelling it is the function of the vision to do what so that what happens what is the end result of the vision then remember the vision is the best possible outcome so go out there with a pen and a paper and know at the back of your mind that you're going to put that pen on the paper and you're going to write what you want to do have the confidence enough and dare enough to write it down i know it sounds sometimes it sounds like it's embarrassing i know i've been there it sounds like hey come on lorenz come on i know it sounds like that but that's the nature of vision it is it is it, that's how it is it's 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 not that it's not a comfortable thing to align yourself with it But that's what it is. It's coming from you write it down. All right? Write it down and make it plain. And if possible, have some numbers. Some examples of visions can, you know, give you a head start. People like Microsoft, they said a computer, a desktop computer in every home. That's a vision. way back there when the mainframe computer was the big thing on on only by corporations big time corporations and they said a computer running windows in every home that vision is actually next to a reality today they still have some places to go but it's next to a reality okay disney if you look at what their vision is you will know that their vision is to make people happy and where did it come from 
see how Disney is different from Microsoft. Where did it come from? The Microsoft guy came from a guy who is a nerd working with software. The Disney guy came from a guy who was, you know, adventurous and creative working with cartoons. Are you getting my point? It is personable. It is personal. It starts from there. So whatever it is that is personable with you, whatever it is that matters to you, that is the beginning point of the vision. And now expand it so that it benefits somebody else. And write that thing down. To dash so that dash. Don't worry how it comes out. But just make sure that your heart is connected to those two blanks, those two parts. What are you going to do? Or what is supposed to be done? So that what happens? That is what the vision is all about. Let me tell you, it can be written down in, a, in one sitting. In less than 30 minutes. Actually, in less than 15 minutes. I don't know if it's true, but I'm told that in the world war, somewhere in the world war, there are some engineers who are tasked to come up with a special vehicle, whatever it is. I don't remember the story very well. If they don't, they're going to die. What happened? They did come up with it because of what was at stake. So the question is, what is at stake in your life today? Your life should be at stake when you do not have a vision. And now have that in mind. And go out there and write that vision down. Now, there is a chance that you are not comfortable and confident. Maybe you're not believing so much in that particular vision. This is where life coaches like myself, mentors and other people come in, professional people come in. Reach out to such like guys. And by the way, you can even reach out online and you can find resources that can help you to craft your vision down. Reach out. But the first thing I am, I'm not telling you to reach out before. I'm telling you to go into your spirit. Go into your heart first. Take a pen and paper and nothing else. Maybe music or whatever. And just go away and do what I've asked you to do. What are the parameters? Number one, it solves someone else's problem. Number two, it is connected to your potential, your values, connected to your passion, things that matter to you. Number three, it is larger than life itself, so large that you are not able to do it alone. Number four, it's next to impossible. And number five, it's very expensive. You cannot afford it yourself. Use those parameters to check and see if the vision meets that threshold. There is no shortcut, my friends, of writing a vision. There is no formula. You are the vision. You came locked with the vision. It came inside of you. In fact, it is older than you. Before you were created, you were created so that you can serve that vision. So how do you reconnect with it? You just do what I've told you. You go with a pen and a paper and you write what it is. That's it. That's it. That's what I did. That's what I did. It took me 12 years. But that's when it push comes to shove, that's what it is. Listen, you will delay all you want, but when push comes to shove, there is no other method you will use to write your vision other than what I've told you. You go on a piece of paper, you access your spirit, you access your heart, you access your desires, you access your passion, and you come up with something. My point is you're not blank right now. You have those things already. It is an issue of clarifying them on paper. Now, listen. Once it is done, make sure you've written it on a piece of paper and now you are able to leave this thing reciting it over and over and over again. You look at it before you sleep. You look at it when you wake up the first thing in the morning. You think about it and so on. And guess what? It starts growing the moment you put it down on paper it is like a baby that has just been born a one day old baby that baby needs nurturing needs care needs tender loving kindness you need to be watching especially if you're watching your firstborn if you've ever had you know several babies the firstborn is the one that you take care of a lot because 
You've never been a father before, never been a mother before. You know, it's, they swallow everything, something, you rush them to hospital and you demand an x-ray. But then by the third born, you don't care what they swallow. <laughs> My point is this, that the vision, once it's been documented, you need to nurture it. You need to meditate upon it. You need to think about it. You need to do those things, those six things I talked to you about in the previous eight episodes that you need, you need suppose, you, you're supposed to be, do, to be doing to bring this vision to fruition. But my point is simply this, that it's going to morph, it's going to grow. Even if it's not perfect the first time that you've written it, it is better than nothing. It is a thousand times better than nothing. That is where you begin. And you're going to refine it with time. And let me tell you this, even if you refine it with time, the essence of it is not going to change a lot. The functional essence of the vision is not going to change a lot. It's just maybe the scope, the wording, and so on. But the essence of it is going to still be there. So why not clarify your vision today? Why not clarify what your vision in life is? Why not have a vision statement today? It would be nice for you to do it and share with the rest of the world what it is. If you're not so confident about it. And now, once you've become confident about this thing, after maybe sharing with a coach or a mentor, you put it on your social media. Don't just put photos, funny things on your social media. Put your vision on your LinkedIn. Put your vision on your WhatsApp. Put your vision on your Twitter. Put your vision on your Facebook. Put your vision on your Instagram. And now people and the world start responding to you commensurate to the clarity of your vision. That's how the world works. Well, I think I've done this service. If you feel you needed much more knowledge and information on how you can craft your vision, you can start by Googling and so on and so forth. But if you need help, you can reach out. Maybe just put a comment here on this episode and reach out. And Or you can go to lifesignatures.life and look for us and we're going to connect and we're going to help you. You should have your vision. It is as easy as one two, three, I kid you not. Until next time, bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor, Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University, found at mastermindmentor.com, who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.